Okay, so this is the third and final video of chapter 11. <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit more about that uh, apical proteins versus basal lateral proteins. Um, we have um, proteins uh, on the apical side of, of the gut epithelia that uh, their, their job is to, to move, um, move sugar from the gut lumen into the cell. And this is a, an active transport. And so it, it requires ATP, it requires energy. And so, um, so we will be using energy uh, to, to move the sugar into the cell. But then on the, on the basal lateral side, we've got another transporter that uh, moves the sugar out of the cell and into the bloodstream. And this uh, transporter uses passive transport. And so, um, if we had the uh, if we had the apical proteins move down to the basal lateral side, or basal lateral proteins move up to the apical side, what would happen would be that we would move a sugar into the cell and it would just drift right back out. Move a sugar into the cell and it would just drift right back out. And the problem with that is that Every time we move a sugar into the cell, we're burning ATP, and and so um, we would be uh, it would be a loss of ATP um, for no gain. And so by keeping the apical proteins apical and the basal lateral proteins basal lateral, we can uh, move sugar from the gut lumen uh, into the bloodstream uh, efficiently. Another uh, job of the tight junctions is to keep um, bacteria from from moving uh, from the lumen of the gut into the bloodstream, and so uh, so those tight junctions are able to exclude uh, bacteria from moving across the membrane or uh, uh, between the two cells. Um, you wouldn't want that bacteria to move between the two cells because then it would get into um, the bloodstream, and we have a we have a uh, a term for uh, um, if if you ever have uh, bacteria in your bloodstream and it's called sepsis or uh, septic septicemia and that can cause uh, septic shock. Um, so another term that we use it's, it's kind of a technical term for um, when you have blood poisoning and it's um, dead. Um, something like uh, two hundred thousand people a year. Uh, gets uh, septicemia and about 10% of them die. So that's about 20,000 Americans per year die of, of bacteria in their blood. So we definitely um, uh, have a, a um, strong selective pressure for having um, these tight junctions, uh, also known as occludens junctions. And so one of the major proteins of occludens junctions is a protein called occludens. Um, so uh, so I, w I wanted to uh, go into that in a little bit more detail. Um, but another thing that we wanted to talk about was the glycosylation of proteins. So this happens in the ER. It starts in the ER and then, and then it gets refined in the... Um, in the, the Golgi. And uh, so, so the way that this works is uh, either to an N or an O, so very specific um, R groups, very specific amino acids, uh, have uh, sugars attached to them. And the sugars, when they get attached, are, are always coming as a, as a large group of sugars. There's five sugars that get attached all at once. And that happens in the ER. And then in the Golgi, um, the exact composition of those sugars gets refined. So some are trimmed off, others added, and the sugar um, that is attached to the protein gets uh, very unique um, for that protein. And um, this is going to perform a couple of different functions. One is uh, in um, allowing for attachment proteins 
to uh, sort the proteins in the Golgi. So, so how does this protein know that it's supposed to go to the cell surface? How does it know that it's supposed to stay in the Golgi? How does it know? Well, some of that is protein information, but some of it is the sugar information. Uh, a second uh, use for these sugars is um, is identification of the cell, or um, um, uh, allowing for communication uh, from cell to cell. Um, many of you have heard about things like tissue rejection. Um, and probably the most famous case of that is blood groups. The the different blood groups, A, B, and O, are just what sugars are attached to the surface of that, of that red blood cell. Um, the identity of those sugars is enough to cause the rejection of that, uh, that uh, blood when you receive a transfusion. Um, because you might have antibodies against that, that blood that is foreign to your body. And so, uh, so these sugars are doing two things. They're allowing for sorting of the proteins and also allowing for, um, for uh, identification of the cells by the body. These sugars are attached to proteins as well as to lipids. Um, so we have glycolipids and then we also have glycoproteins and they have these really complex sugars um, helping to identify uh, that protein to target it for the correct membrane and to, um, to tell the body that this cell is not a foreigner, it's, it's part of, of my own body so I don't need to attack it. Um, so uh, uh, these sugars are always in the, um, in the extracellular space. So we don't do glycosylation on the, uh, on the um, cytosolic side. This is always attached in the lumen of the ER, in the lumen of the Golgi, and then uh, since the uh, asymmetry is maintained, um, they would be on the outside. So what do we use them for? Uh, lots of things. Um, so uh, like for instance, in the very first day we watched that neutrophil rolling and slowing down. And so, so there were these lectins. Um, so um, P-selectin and PSGL1 um, or P-selectin ligand 1. Um, so these uh, P-selectins and PSGL1 um, allow for the neutrophil to interact with the uh, endothelial cells of the blood vessel and it slows them down so that they're rolling along the surface. They're rolling along the surface um, allows for um, them to slow down a little bit, not move as quickly as the blood is moving. The red blood cells are just flying along, but the neutrophils, they they're just rolling along the surface of the endothelial cells on the lumen of the blood vessel. And um, that allows for the rest of that video that we watched on the first day, the, um, the communication of the neutrophils saying to the endothelial cell, I'm here, and the endothelial cell saying to the, uh, to the neutrophil, um, I need you to... Um, extravasate, move between two endothelial cells and, and into a site of infection here in the tissue. And, and so uh, it, it's the interaction of the, the sugar and the um, sugar receptor, um, uh, also known as lectins. Lectin domains are one of the common domains in cell surface proteins um, that are responsible for communication. So, uh, so these are the things that I want to just uh, finish up the, the chapter uh, 11 uh, on membranes and we're going to have a little bit more on 
on membranes, uh, but um, in chapter 12, but that's going to be um, uh, moving things across the membrane. So proteins that are responsible for uh, active and passive transport and, and how we use those for other kinds of communication inside of the cell. So this concludes chapter 11.